I think it is very difficult to be a public market individual stock picker in a world where the central banks are constantly meddling. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Chamath on the current state of the market today. Chamath says that many people will misjudge how difficult it can be to return more money than what's been taken in. He also believes that he has overly benefited from being able to take advantage of opportunities while being backed by massive amounts of central bank money. Chamath believes it's extremely difficult to be a public market stock picker in a world where central banks are always interfering. He says that since 2008, it's mainly been beta that's directed the market and that the people who have profited were the ones in tech that have supplied the best data. Let's listen to Chamath on the All In podcast as he talks about the contrast between alpha and beta markets. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. I think people underestimate how hard it is. It is really hard to actually return more money than you have taken in. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that what I'm focused just on. Just that simple statement. And, and by the way, it was hard in the last 10 years where we've had basically a massive up market and the four yep. of us frankly benefited from the extraordinary luck of being in tech. I've been thinking a lot about this. I think that I have disproportionately benefited from being at the right place at the right time, backed by enormous amounts of central bank money. And so I think we all have been. I think it is very difficult to be a public market individual stock picker in a world where the central banks are constantly meddling. Because when they do, the best thing that you can do is belong the market beta. And the more concentrated you are, the better returns you would have delivered since 2008, when the central banks started to get very aggressively involved. When individual stock pickers reigned the, the universe was when central banks were largely on the sidelines. And so there was all kinds of dispersion, right? Dispersion, meaning good outcomes, bad outcomes, lots of alpha, right? Meaning your performance was independent of the market. But since 2008, it's largely been beta that's driven the market. And the folks that have done exceedingly well were those in tech because we delivered the best beta. And every time we confuse alpha and beta, we get over our ski tips and there's always some big out, you know, blow up. So I think my, my, my general takeaway is that uh, if the central banks stay on the sidelines, individual stock picking reigns and active management can win. If they continue to be involved and do quantitative easing and all of this other stuff, index funds that are long concentrated market beta will always outperform in the long run. Chamath advises that if you're attempting to create alpha, you need to have an awareness of what's currently happening in the world. On the other hand, if you're trying to distribute beta to the market and also manage an index, you should disregard the idea that there may be additional price adjustments. Chamath thinks we're at the stage of the cycle where constipation is now beginning and is causing a degree in deal velocity. Nobody should be putting money into deals right now. What is it? Why? <laughs> what, what does it oh, do? Unless, unless you're I in the am, business, yeah. unless you're in the business of running a fee generating machine, if you're really trying to generate alpha, you have to have a sense of what's actually happening in the world right now. If you're just trying to deliver the market beta and run a, an index, then yeah, you're right. You should ignore this idea that there could be more price adjustments. But if you look at the public markets, which is again, the ultimate terminal buyer, they have more cash than they ever had since 2008 which means that there is no reason to buy. You're talking so about the, private companies. It all ultimately ends up in the public markets. And so if the public markets are saying there is no reason to buy this stuff, it trickles down. So then the crossover investor who has a public private business says, you know what, on the public side, I'm completely de-risked and in cash. And so on the private side, I'll just be a little bit more circumspect and wait. As David said, I'll just wait six months and put even more money in later, I'll actually have a better IRR and I'll make the same profit dollars. So then the series B and C firm who used to feed those deals to the crossover folks are like, oh, well, if you're waiting, I don't want to have to write 
a check to support these folks. My whole point was to have you mark up the deal so I could raise a new fund. They slow down. And then that goes back to the Series A person who's like, well, wait a minute. You know, the reason I paid it at 50 pre was because I thought you'd step in and buy it at 100. And so would, then they slow down. So all it. I'm saying is I think that we are at the point of the cycle where constipation is setting in. Hmm. And this is why you're seeing such a downtick in deal velocity and, and dollars put to work. I'll say it even more. If you're if you're a venture investor who took a longitudinal view on public market stocks and then have now seen 60 to 70 percent write downs of those same stocks that you could have distributed, you should still have something to answer to. That makes no sense. It turns out that the skill of private market investing and the skill of public market investing are different. Even if all you're doing is delivering the market beta, I think what we need to do is figure out how to be competitive. Now, this goes all the way back to our first conversation. Subsidies don't make us more competitive. Things that governments can do to make us more competitive are long-term drawn out tax incentives that change the earnings capacity of companies. Why? Because in the capital markets reward those businesses. We know this, the S&P 500 is down 20%, 22% for the year. The Dow Jones down 15-ish. The NASDAQ is down like 30. So this is just reflecting what we already know, which is that the stock market is down this year. Do you think it's another um, data point to support the idea that active managers, generally speaking, and maybe holistically speaking over time, cannot beat the, uh, you know, the market cannot beat indices? I mean, do you have a point of view on that as an investor, Sachs? Well, I think, you know, you're talking about public market investors. It, I think yeah. it's very yeah, hard to beat. Investors. I think yeah. it's very hard to beat the public markets over a long period of time consistently. I just think it is. Now, you know, the contradiction, though, is that if you have no active managers, then the indices won't be efficient anymore. So you need the participation of the active managers to help drive the, uh, the indices and make corrections to it. So, and the fewer active strategies you have, the more inefficient the markets will become, thereby inviting active strategies. So, you know, I, I think it's a good question. I, I think there are some managers who are, who can probably do it, but I think it's a very tough thing to do. Chamath notes that there is a distinction between the skill of public market investing versus private market investing. Regardless of all you're doing is supplying the market with beta, subsidies don't drive us to be more competitive. What the government does to make us compete is just lengthy tax incentives that shift the earnings capacity of all companies. Chamath also believes that it's very difficult to beat out public markets over an extended period of time, but active managers are needed to keep the indices efficient. What do you guys think of Chamath's opinions on private markets versus public markets? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.